All right, Paraswap. Thanks for joining us. Um, thanks for for entering the herd room. For people listening, we've got a great partnership. We've been working together for quite a while now. Um, for some of the people that are in the space or joining now and don't know about Paraswap, um, are you able to maybe give a quick introduction to yourself and to Paraswap? Yeah, sure. So Paraswap is a decentralized exchange uh, aggregator. Uh, it's basically an API that allows uh, dApps, wallets, uh, uh, trading bots uh, to access decentralized liquidity uh, across uh, hundreds of exchanges, or as we like to see it, uh, tens of thousands of liquidity pools across uh, the Ethereum blockchain and other EVFJs. Amazing. Amazing. All right, we're getting a few people to request right now. What I'll do is I'll let everyone know the structure of how we're going to do this. Um, just to any precision, we'll go through what Paraswap has been working on, um, and we'll have a little chat. We just brought Julian up, um, so Julian can jump in on the conversation. We'll have a chat about what we're focused on and what we're excited about in 2022. And then in the last 10 minutes, we'll open up to, to all of you guys, and, and you can get in and ask a few questions. Um, so for now, just hold off on the questions. Um, Julian, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for, for having me, guys, and, uh, and welcome to the uh, to the herd, uh, Paraswap and Mooney. Hey, Julian, great to be here. All right, so Mooney, um, tell us about twenty twenty two and and what's on the horizon for Paraswap and and what you're excited to to be focused on. Yeah, lots of great things. Uh, so it will be a continuation for what you started in twenty twenty one. Uh, which is mainly uh, making uh, the DAO uh, much bigger and uh, having the DAO also taking more leadership and uh, control about what's happening, uh, which we started to see and it started accelerating uh, recently a lot by uh, having some community members uh, taking over some proposals and uh, making... Uh, very sophisticated uh, ones uh, in order to improve uh, the tokenomics of Paraswap and uh, use cases where we can create a critical mass in terms of uh, user traction and volumes. Um, the main goal of Paraswap DAO is to fully decentralize Paraswap, and that's something that is progressive. So it's ha the first step was launching Paraswap itself uh, with smart contracts uh, and the API and what we already know. But the second major step is launching the DAO. And the long-term goal is to have us as a core team uh, being able to literally switch off for three months and come back and see Paraswap thriving and progressing, growing because it's been taken over by its community. So meanwhile, we're on our side, on the core team side, uh, what we're trying to do is to build more features, uh, more liquidity, improve uh, pricing algorithms, uh, add support for more chains. So that's something we're working on. Uh, it will be if, uh, more EVM chains, uh, other non-EVM chains like uh, Solana, ZK Sync, uh, uh, Startnet, and so on. Um, yeah, I would say basically this is uh, what our focus is to maximize on decentralization and maximize on the current product by making it better. Amazing. Amazing. And what do you think is the biggest challenge when it comes to growing the DAO? What have you, what have you seen? Yeah, I would say there are many uh, trade-offs that have to be taken because having full decentralization from day one may be hard because uh, having a centralized team uh, is always more efficient. Like decision-making can be made right away, and executed right away. Uh, when you have a DAO, you have to reach consensus and to try to please the majority, uh, which works fine. And uh, the main challenge was to make the DAO efficient, like to uh, find the same efficiency that we had pre-DAO uh, with the DAO, which is not easy because... Uh, when you have the crowd, people have to agree. Consensus is too slow. That's why blockchains like Ethereum is way, way slow than equivalent chains that are more centralized. Uh, so I think we are in a very good path and that's something we're seeing where we are able to achieve a vote uh, very quickly and we can achieve uh, consensus very quickly. And I think the key is to put in uh, some standards uh, and some rules that people will agree on once and moving forward, uh, executing on those roles will be very smooth. So I think we are not there as much as we'd, we'd like to, but we are in a very good path in any ways. The, we, we don't feel like uh, we are, I would say, penalized by 
having this uh, consensus. We feel like that it's the other way. We are getting community contributions that speed up things and add a lot of value. I agree with that. And I think a lot of people that are maybe not working in this space and are looking at it from the outside don't actually understand how hard it is uh, to, to actually run a DAO and launch a DAO and have a successful DAO with community contributing. Um, and it's also important that, you know, you do have that progressive decentralization approach, especially at a, at a very early stage. Um, so I think, you know, absolutely going down the path you've taken is, is what, you know, many people believe to be the best road. But um I have no doubt that you guys are going to get there and you're, you're, you're hitting the strides. You're doing amazing progress at the moment. Um, Julian, if you want to jump in, if, there, if there's something that you're focused on in the partnership for, for this year with Paraswap, um, maybe a bit of alpha for the community, if there's anything you want to share, please do. Um, I think so far, uh, so far so good. Uh, I believe we're one of the first one to, probably the first one to integrate Paraswap back then. Um, and and it's been a it's been a pretty uh, great uh, partnership so far, and we'll continue to do so. And uh, any products that uh, Passwap is building will also integrate inside the uh, the, the the stack. Um, and yeah, basically, um, that's um, that's been a fantastic journey so far. It has, um, Munir. You you were saying that you were looking into cross chain. Um, cross-chain options for, for Paraswap. Did you want to dive into that a little bit and let the community know what your uh, sort of, I know there's there's obviously, you know, a, a hundred different options out there and, and everything that you want to do, but in the immediate future, what what can the Paraswap community and the stake data community expect? Yeah. Um, so we started by being multi-chain. Uh, now we are having uh, four chains uh, plus uh, two upcoming chains. One of them is the thing that we uh, made some uh, just uh, few weeks ago and it's working it's working fine and the other evm chains so the question is okay you have a uh, multi-chain but i want to swap my eth uh, to die in polygon uh, or maybe uh, by making the swap i want to deposit on ave on polygon because it's more gas efficient uh, or the epy i'm getting is more is more gas, gas efficient um doing that with the current tooling it's unfortunately not possible because once we talk about cross-chain, we lose composability. Uh, so the good news is that there are other projects who are working on that, and they are using Paraswap API to empower their solution. Uh, one of them is uh, LiFi, uh, and we're running a uh, project now with LiFi and Connext uh, in order to facilitate that kind of scenario where you have if and you want die on Polygon, but on Aave, deposited on Aave, because this is where the best API you have. So um, what uh, LiFi would do, it will call our API, uh, it will execute a trade on Ethereum, uh, say E to DAI, then it's going to move the DAI uh, using uh, Connect uh, to Polygon, which is uh, quite fast. Once the DAI is available on Polygon, it's going to execute again Paraswap in order to put your DAI on Aave. Um, but it can be also uh, your ETH is, is better to move it first into Polygon, then swap it into DAI and put it directly on Aave. Uh, sometimes much more complex than that where you're doing a large trade, like say a million dollars uh, worth of ETH, and you want, it on poly you want your DAI or a DAI on Polygon. So in this case, maybe uh, this trade is more uh, lucrative or more liquid if you were to swap it first to USDC, then transfer the USDC to Polygon, then do USDC to die on 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 on, uh, on Polygon. The issue with that is what happens if the second swap will fail, will revert. If you're doing that within the same blockchain, well, you nothing happens. All you did is spend in gas, uh, but your funds are not lost. I mean, you have... 1,000 ETH, it, you're going to end up with 1,000 ETH minus the gas. Um, so to get around that, there are a few solutions, but none of it is still, I would say, established enough. Um, the good news is that this problem is not new. It exists also in CFI and TradeFi. So if you look at uh, aggregators uh, or what you call best execution platforms in, the, in those worlds, 
uh, you will see that this problem is it, it exists and but it's addressed very differently now we address it with applying uh, optimization algorithms where you're gonna find the best path between one token and the other and smart contracts where you're gonna try to optimize your execution especially in terms of gas but here uh, what you're looking for is uh, to find again this composability but it's not uh, uh, I would say deterministic uh, composability, it's probabilistic, which means that you're not sure 100% that you're going to get back your 1000 ETH, but you are 99% or 99.99% sure that you're getting this this um, this this uh, 1000 ETH back. Or maybe you are going to use a third party that's going to take this risk for you of losing this uh, up to 1% of their of the of the um, of this amount but in exchange of a fee. So their job is to make sure they're not losing, maybe they're even making more of that, but taking the risk on your own, on their side and making you pay a fee in exchange for that risk. So that already exists in, in TradeFi, in CFI, uh, like you see uh, platforms like Tagomi, for instance, they are doing uh, this kind of things, um, especially executing in more complex venues like order books instead of uh, just AMMs, which are also more, more complex uh, to, to handle. But I think we uh, DeFi is now conscious of this problem and it's market need, a very, very strong market need. And the third thing, I think uh, we will never be able to compete with centralized exchanges if we don't have efficient uh, cross-chain swaps because uh, on an end-user perspective, well, I have uh, ETH and I want to exchange it for DAI. I don't care if this DAI is on Polygon or is in Avalanche or any, anywhere else. I just want to sell my ETH and have DAI. I don't want to think about your fancy uh, backend or or technical stack. I just want to do it. So uh, centralized exchanges, they make you do that by just pushing a button. And I think DeFi is, should be, and will be for sure able to do equivalent thing, if not better, because it's more secure. It doesn't ask you at any point to put your funds on a on a custody of any third party. So I think this is going to take maybe more than 2022, unfortunately, because those are very complex, I would say, computer science, uh, mathematical problems. But I think we are in a very, very, um, I would say, very close to, to it, say, in the next 18 to 24 months, we should have something established as we know DeFi right now in a, in a single chain. I agree with everything you said. Big problems are not easy to solve, but definitely on the path to being solved. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, we, we've got a lot to look forward to in the next 18, 18 months and beyond. Uh, it really will be a multi-chain world. Um, on that note, we might wrap up with, uh, before, we answer, before we answer community questions, with where you see DeFi at the moment and where you see it going overall in the next 24 months. Yeah, I think uh, there are two uh, segments. One is retail, uh, where we will see more retail adoption, which started already in 2021, especially with the launch of BSC and Polygon, and accelerated with launch uh, with other chains uh, like Avalanche, uh, Phantom, and Arbitrum, and others. So I think um, it's impressive, so first of all, because uh, the first version of Paraswap uh, in 2019 was a pure retail product, was something that was meant to be used by anyone and meant to abstract the complexity of decentralized exchanges, which was uh, a very, very early, uh, early stage idea. It didn't, there was no market. And nowadays, everyone knows what's a Uniswap, everyone knows what's a DEX, what's an AMM. So I think uh, retail will have more adoption, uh, hopefully at least uh, on DeFi. But the other segment is institutions, uh, which we start to see more and more institutions uh, uh, in integrating DeFi, whether directly by trading simply on DEXs and lending protocols and using tools uh, or protocols like StakeDAO, uh, or uh, some that cannot uh, integrate directly into DeFi, and they will be using and they are and they started already uh, using bridges like Aave Arc, uh, where you are using the Aave protocol but you are not using directly the Aave protocol, you are using a permission pool on, on top of Aave protocol. And we are also working on something like that by adding a new router with, um, it's like a module that's uh, adding to Paraswap, which gonna have uh, this uh, whitelisting. So if you're an institution, you are trading on DeFi, but you are trading on a whitelisted route, 
And on the other side, you have market makers like Paraswap Pool who are already trading on Paraswap as well, uh, so that you are accessing DeFi uh, without really touching DeFi directly. So I think institutions, um, we've been talking about institutions coming since 2016, 2017, uh, but now it's happening, it's more concrete, and it's happening on DeFi directly, which I think uh, it's something great. And I think and I hope that it's going to develop a lot in 2022. Great answer. Great answer, Monir. Uh, well, let's open up to the community. We had a few of you ask questions very early, um, and we had to kind of pull them back because we wanted to have a bit of a chat first before we open up. But now is the time. If you have questions, if there's something you want to ask, uh, please request, and I'll bring you up, and we, we can ask um, ask a few questions to Paraswap or to Julian. I had quite a few uh, requests to speak at the beginning. Um, I'm assuming we maybe answered a few of their questions already, hence why um, they're not jumping in at the moment. But um, Julian, is there anything you want to add? Mm. Is my mic away from the mic at the moment? Yeah, sorry, my, my mic was uh, on mute. Um... Yeah, so uh, maybe uh, maybe a quick um, uh, question regarding um, uh, projects that are uh, currently building. Um, I mean, we've seen uh, over the past uh, few months a few different projects that now are looking to build on top of. Uh, so before it was like text, uh, Dex aggregator aggregating uh, uh, Dexes, and now we're seeing projects that are being or are building on top of uh, uh, DEX aggregators, um, uh, such as uh, CASWAP and all different things. So um, I wonder what's the, if it's the last layer uh, uh, that will happen, basically aggregating the DEX aggregators and then making sure um, that there's no um, advanced uh, DeFi a mechanism to either sandwich attack users or front running and all those different mechanisms. Um, yeah, I just want to have uh, maybe a feedback on this one, um, yeah, either from uh, from from you, Money and Paraswap, or maybe the community. And yeah, because I think that will be a, a big subject. Uh, we what I called the um, the, uh, the layer um, like on top of all the the, the chains. And now what we're seeing is also like on top of DEX aggregators, which I think is fascinating for me. Almost like a layer, layer three, right? I think we've spoken yeah, about that. Layer three, layer three, what I call layer three is the, uh, the fact that users can come and start using a product without actually knowing they're using a specific chain. For them, they just want to have an asset. If the asset is sitting on, the, uh, on a specific chain, it doesn't matter. And they can move from chain to another chain without knowing that they're actually moving from chains to another chain without actually understanding the need of a specific wallet. And this is like more like layer three type of thing. And now we're also saying, seeing uh, projects that are building on top of DEX aggregators uh, to uh, offer uh, pretty advanced uh, financial products such as uh, retail protections, uh, avoiding uh, arbitrage to front run them, and all these different uh, pre advanced uh, mechanisms. Yeah, then uh, the meta aggregator and uh, MacOSWAP is a very good example because it's not just a meta aggregator, it's also adding a uh, settlement layer on, uh, on top where if you're trading A to B and I'm trading A to A, A to B, uh, well, we can meet and uh, make the exchange without even going on chain. That's super, super efficient and uh, has full MEV protection, uh, I think. But yeah, the issue with MEV is uh, more real than, than before. Uh, we always thought that with more liquidity and more establishments, maybe uh, the opportunities of arbitrage will go away, which we don't see at all. Uh, we start to see a lot of people being sandwich attacked uh, every time like uh, all, all day or maybe even every block uh so i think solutions anti-mev solutions are more needed than before uh hopefully maybe there will be more innovations in blockchains where 
ordering is going to be taken into consideration. Like I submit the transaction before you, I'm going to be counted before you do, uh, but which is a very hard problem to, to address right now. So I think, um, yeah, solutions we have work uh, pretty well, like um, flashbots, uh, blocks routes, uh, also uh, Barasa pool with market makers. So if you trade directly with market makers, you won't be subject to MEV, uh, which is great. But yeah, it's not really a final solution. I think Protronic is going to exist always because it exists also in traditional finance, except that here it's just uh, transparent. We can we can see it. So maybe we're going to see another form of um, of uh, front running in the future uh, on layer two, like on a ZK Sync or a uh, Starknet, where we're not we won't be even able to see, depending on the platforms, uh, of course. But yeah, I think. Um, it's a, it's a very fascinating problem. What's fascinating me most is what will this look like once we are we gonna move on from layer ones? Will be only on layer twos, and uh, will that be still visible? Will uh, will be still aware and be able to prove that MEV happens? Uh, like MEV is a problem, and uh, come up with solutions like uh, like um, flashbots, block routes, uh, and those uh, DAP based uh, solutions like Parasoft Pool. Amazing. Hitachi, thanks for joining us, mate. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, Munir, Julian, hello hello to everyone as well. I just had a really quick question. I think um, it's something which has been at the forefront of most people's minds quite recently. It's this idea of like rebasing tokens and protocol-owned liquidity, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and now we've had this confluence of, of ideas marrying together liquidity and uh, protocol ownership. Um, with gov- uh, communities such as Olympus looking into offering an AMM. Um, there's a few others, obviously, like Time with Daniel Siesta and the new release from Andre Cronje, which is really shaping up the world of how, how liquidity works. Um, I just wondered, Munir, what was, what was your view and, I guess, the views of the engineers at Paraswap in terms of how this evolves the service that you guys might be providing? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we looked into Olympus, especially. We haven't. I haven't looked into uh, V. That's uh, if that's the name of uh, Android Cronje, last uh, last innovation. But yeah, uh, of Olympus, it's. I think it's a super nice solution. Uh, the proof is that it's one of the most forked uh, projects in the in the ecosystem. So that's also a big sign of uh, of, of success. Um, on our perspective. There is no change because um, if a project is gonna use an Olympus to acquire its liquidity uh, from from uh, from users, uh, well, that liquidity at the end of the game is still uh, running on those AMMs. If Olympus is gonna create a specific AMM, well, that's great for us because it's more liquidity and also more solutions for 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 users where you don't have to uh, you don't have to uh, worry much about. Uh, moving funds from from A to B, uh, we're gonna worry about the complexity that is underlying. So I haven't looked exactly into the AMM solution for for Olympus, but um, the current the current solution that they have brought, it's not really changing anything because at the end of the game, they, they, this liquidity is still resides within Uniswap, Sushi, or any AMM you can think of. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Guys, Twitter space, Twitter space it seems to be wrecked. I cannot see who is requesting to come up, so I apologize in advance. I've made Julian a co-host, so if he can see someone at the moment that's requesting to come up, by all means, um, let them up. We've got five minutes left on the space anyway, so if there is any final questions or if there's anything that maybe Julian or, or Monier wants yeah, I to... Can, I can see someone. Let me... Uh, okay, crest. Boom. Blame so Twitter, guys. Blame Twitter. Ichi, you're on. You're, the mic is yours. Hmm. Okay, I think I think you're on mute. Black girl, Alex. Uh, okay. Um. Good day, everyone. Uh, my my question is, uh, you know, for power swap and all. You know, um, maybe I'm not supposed to be saying this, probably, but 
I, I think maybe um we've always like loved the um staked out community and you know their partnership with Paraswap and uh, we've always been um always been a fan of um Paraswap. But the recent um you know um recent stuff Paraswap did with um the airdrop, okay. I know a lot of people have not been happy with it, but it's actually something. You 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 kind of rewarded people who actually who actually aren't a member of your community, to be honest. Like for me, for example, I've been using um Paraswap um, you know since last year and up to you know, like not since 2020 up to last year and and all, you know. And I haven't even, I didn't even use so many wallets. I just used one wallet. It's not like um, I, I was an airdrop hunter or something. But I noticed that Paraswap actually airdropped to airdrop hunters than its own community. So I just, I don't, I just want to understand better what really went wrong, you know. And now, um, the Paraswap tokens. Uh, I think, I think, I, I think we. Uh, oh. Yeah, we we understand the, the, the question. I think maybe um, uh, if Munia wants to to uh, answer uh, this uh, uh, question related to hairdrop, uh, I don't I don't think this is the right place to talk about this. But maybe Munia, if you want to um, say something, and then we can move on. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so um, I mean, we we talked about it a few times. Uh, we published also some content about it. We have a discussion in our forum. So if you go to gov network you will see that there are a few discussions, a uh, few uh, community-initiated discussions. <clears throat> there were some, um, I would say, the filters we used were quite harsh, especially on Polygon. That's uh, something we have uh, openly uh, communicated about. So I invite you to join this discussion. You will see it there. I can maybe send the comments on the link uh, after the, the, the call, but it's very easy to find. You will see a discussion around an airdrop and the community that's taking over this. Uh, so yeah, that's the idea also of a DAO is having the community taking over any critical decision that is no longer belonging to us. But yeah, in our side, we were maybe uh, too harsh because we had uh, more than a million wallets that were clearly farming the, the airdrop. I mean, we unfortunately don't have 10% of DeFi users, otherwise we'll be doing more than a billion a day. But yeah, the filters were too hard and I invite you strongly to join the, the discussion on the forum and express your opinion, and the community will definitely take that uh, into consideration. Well said. said, Monia. Well said, well said. Guys, we're coming, we're coming to the end. Um, I know we, we answered quite a few questions at the beginning. I know we had quite a few requests to, to jump in. Um, we can definitely schedule another one. We can definitely bring bring uh, Monia back on. I'm sure he'd love to be here. Um, we can even maybe look at doing a, a longer space next time. Um, it's been great. I think we've we've touched on a lot of important points. You, you've you've explained what the the highlights are, and what you're looking forward to in in 2022, and and we want to keep pushing this amazing partnership with Staketel and Paraswap. We have no doubt that that's going to continue to grow. We want to thank all all the listeners and all the community um, across all the different channels that we use for for being engaged and being so active with us. We we really appreciate it. Um, like I said, this may not be the longest one, but we promise we'll do another one. Um, we can gather feedback. Let us know what you think. Um, let us know if the, if the questions that were on your mind got answered. Um, but I think we'll we'll wrap it up here. If there's anything else that maybe Hitachi or Munier or Julian wants to say, um, we'll just give them one more chance to say that, and then we'll we'll probably cut it off. I mean, I was super happy to be here for the first uh, first Twitter space, and uh, looking forward for another one and also more collaboration with the Stake DAO community. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, thanks uh, for thanks for the space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the space, and uh, yeah, looking forward to the um, uh, many more uh, coming uh, uh, features uh, that uh, PowerSwap is building, and also the cross layers uh, uh, mechanism uh, for for PowerSwap. And we're all really excited. This into into Stake DAO. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, we're all really excited, guys. All right, thank you for your time, guys. Thanks for joining. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.